Let's see if you can guess this one. Coming up, an interview with some of the members of a band that uh, has been somewhat forgotten in the time that we live in, which is strange because for a couple of years, they were as big as any group on radio. In fact, in 1999, uh, when BMI compiled their list of the most played songs of the century, they had two in the top 25. It's tied with the Beatles and more than any other proper band. They actually had three in the top 60. Uh, their vocal harmonies were some of the best of the rock era, and yet they were like Haley's Comet because by the 70s, they all but disappeared from radio altogether. Coming up next, the story of one of the most played songs ever, the heart-wrenching song that many have walked down the aisle to, but it's a bit obsessive, I'll explain. It was supposed to be a slow ballad, but during the recording, the pace quickened and made it a classic. Interviews coming up next. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you crashed and burned by making some bad choices in the Choose Your Own Adventure book series, you're going to dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now. Click the big red button uh, so that you can see when our interviews come out. We'd love to have you as part of our community. So I'm excited to bring you yet another episode from our series, Revelations, where featured artists go very deep on their greatest songs and albums. Methodical interviews on these songs with the artists that you just won't find anywhere else. You know, when BMI released their top 100 most played songs of the 20th century in 1999, if you skim the list, you know, there were very few surprises. You saw the usual suspects that you'd automatically assume would be on there, like Yesterday by the Beatles. Yesterday, all my trouble seems so Bridge Over Trouble Water by Simon and Garfunkel. Like a bridge over trouble. You know, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding. I'm sitting on the dock of the bay, watching of course, every breath you take by the police. Every breath you take, every but then you might have noticed that there was one group from the late 60s who had as many songs in the top 25 as the Beatles and three songs in the top 60. And you're like, huh? But then if you really think about it and listen to all those songs, it's not all that surprising because the number one hits cherished. And Wendy. And the number two hit, Never My Love. Never my love. They're all songs that just soothe the soul, put a smile on your face and an ache in your heart. And the group behind them had a two year run that can compete or compare with just about anybody, uh, with seven hits, including the classic top tens I've just mentioned, as well as Along Comes Mary. And everything that touches you. Both top tens. These guys created intricate harmonies that just cut to the bone. And for a couple of years, just about everything they did or recorded went uh, gold or platinum. <laughs> they were easily one of the most underrated groups to come out of the mid to late 60s. Like I said, their soothing harmonies and pop oriented sound, which sometimes embraced psychedelia. Even had a garage bunk sound there. It made him truly unique in one of the most competitive times in radio history, I might add. The band's roots go back to 1964 when Terry Kirkman, uh, who was born in Kansas, but he was raised in California, and a music major uh, met Jules Alexander, who was a high school dropout from Tennessee who loved R&B music and uh, was becoming a guitar master himself. Jules was in the Navy, and uh, they agreed to form a band once he was out. And that's what happened in 65. From there, they put together uh, actually a really large band that would be even bigger than the big band folk outfits like the new Christy Minstrels and the Serendipity Singers. They called the band The Men, it had 13 members. It played rock and jazz and folk, and they became the house band at the LA Troubadour. But then the group broke up just after a couple of weeks, and uh, seven members left, so the remaining six formed the band The Association. That one came from uh, Terry's wife. She thought of the name of the band. Together, this core band developed an amazingly polished and sophisticated and complex sound. From there, they signed to the Jubilee label and they began to dominate radio on the strength of the big hits. Along Comes Mary was the first one. It was banned by several radio stations. Uh, a lot of DJs refused to play it because they thought that Mary referred to marijuana. <laughs> 
I'll let the band members tell you what the real story is there coming up. Along Comes Mary might have been their first number one hit, but with radio played down due to the drug reference, it peaked at number seven in 66. Their next song, Cherish, did go to number one, and since then it's become a classic love song that many couples have walked down the aisle to. Cherish is a word I use to describe it's about a, a pretty obsessed dude begging the object of his affection when he says, you don't know how many times I wish that I could mold you into someone who could cherish me as much as I cherish you. That's the exact lyric. As much as I cherish you. But you know, truly it's heart wrenching, this song. It's, uh, it just cuts to the bone in both lyric and in the pleading vocals, which by the way are perfect. It's a perfect pop song, especially the part where the narrator says, Oh, I could say I need you, but then you'd realize that I want you, just like a thousand other guys who'd say they loved you, like all the rest of their lives when all they wanted was to touch your face, your hands, and gaze into your eyes. And all they wanted was to touch your face, your hands, and gaze into your Yeah, uh, it's a little obsessive, but just phenomenal. The vocals there, I love the rising background vocals right here. So let's get into this perfect slice of pop uh, with two of the original band members, guitarist and vocalist Jim Yester and co-founding member Jules Alexander. Now, as we go into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsors, Any Eyewear, uh, the glasses that I always wear in here. You know, it's interesting. Did you know that besides getting quality eyewear in a variety of styles, you can also get virtual reality prescription lenses? I'm not really a VR guy, but uh, they do have exceptional detail, comfort, and clarity. Really, at Zenny, there's something for everybody. Glasses start at $6.95. Just click on our info button to get the best prices. Here's the interview. Let's talk about Cherish, which is in the top 100 most played songs of the 20th century. You guys, of course, being, besides the Beatles and Simon Garfunkel and Holland, Dozier Holland, the only ones to have three or more in the top 100. And Cherish being being that one. It's been in Wonder Years and so many. It's oh, just yeah. a, it's a oh, classic yeah. love song. You know, it's, it's so strange because we had been doing that song for, you know, six or seven months mm -hmm. at, before we started recording. And it was not one of the, the five that we chose to record. Wow. And even we weren't going to release it as a follow-up to Along Comes Mary. We were going to release Enter the Young. And a, a DJ in Ohio, I think his name was Ryan Gold or Reinhardt, started playing it off of the album, and it went right up to number one it in his crazy. area. It went that uh, analog viral. Yeah. <laughs> and so the record company said, "Whoa, let, let's think about this." Yeah. <laughs> and so they, you know, wound up wow. releasing Cherish. Yeah. But Jules did the uh, vocal arrangement. Actually, we went through three different vocal arrangements for that, mm -hmm. and uh, I tell you, it's still a challenge and fun to sing that song. Yeah, well, the is. bomb, bomb. I mean, the second you hear it, you're just like, the chills, you know, every time. I've heard that song. In fact, we've covered it. I had a big band, uh, kind of a swing thing, a oh, Sinatra cool. thing, we did a big band version of it. Oh, have you right. heard Matheny's version of it? I have, Ooh. yeah. You guys had to fib a little about how long the song is. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's talk about that. Because it couldn't be over three minutes right. back in those days. So it's okay, it's not. So, uh, <laughs> first of you all. Pull the, you pull the Bill Medley. That's what the Righteous <laughs> Brothers do with, with you lost that love and feeling, right? We did speed it up, and we cut one of the uh, the, the figures last, off of the tag. Yeah, you know? which we do on stage. Yeah, yeah. but we do the whole thing on, yeah, on stage now. I love now, the but, whole thing, yeah. And then, it still wasn't short enough, so we lied. <laughs> <laughs> The label said that it was old and archaic, right? Yeah, no, uh, yeah. actually it was that the was publisher. The, uh, publisher. The publisher. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We used to tell a, a joke about that because Terry told him he was working on something called Cherish, and he says, "Well, that's archaic. Well, we proved that, that we could have archaic and eat it too." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Cherish me as much as I cherish you. Talking about the vocal arrangement for a second. Tell me about kind of putting that together. Did you just kind of know? Well, no, it, it follows some rules. You know, it had to build. Yeah. You know, you got to start out and it's going to build and then it's going to come to the denouement. 
and it's got to have two denouements, which that particular song does. You know, there's, yeah. two, there's two bridges in there. Yeah, there's two bridges in it. So that just, it just told us, you know, yeah. said, okay, do this to me here. That was just the trick, is listening to the song. One of my fondest memories is, is we sitting around Jules on the floor, you know, and he's got his guitar and he's going, okay, you go here and you go here, unless you know that sounds like <laughs> yeah. That sounds and good. hours of doing that, yeah, and yeah. as it comes together, you're just going, "Oh wow!" And everybody's putting in input. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this this was there. the director. He was saying, "Okay, here's what you do." When it gets to that, uh, uh, I yeah, mean, right, that, yeah. that peak. I mean, that's just <laughs> a punch in the face, man. Yeah. It's like that great face melting guitar solo that hits you right in the face, but yeah, it's vocal. Yeah. You know, it's just yep. it takes you to that 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 level that that you don't think you can go. It's just one amazing. of the strangest things about that song. If you really listen to the lyrics, it's about love, death. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. about you know. And it's a sad song. Always, I know. Yeah. <laughs> people play the their only ones who got cool. it is something about Mary in the movie. They used it because she had broken up with her boyfriend and she yeah. was playing Cherish over and over and over. <laughs> and, and it's, it's, you know, well, it's people's fascination, you know, uh, Tristan and Isolde, Romeo and Juliet. Cherish is, comes from the same place. Oh, you yeah. Know? This is not going to happen. You know? <laughs> I am not going to be the one. The lyrics about um, man is never found. Yeah. It just, I mean, it, it's, it's from the heart, man. It's just... Uh, yeah, it's funny. We played just played with Bill. I was telling you yeah. earlier with Bill Medley um, on a cruise a couple of weeks ago, and we all, of course, went to hear him, man. Uh, and every song he said, every one of them was these downer lyrics. Every one. You've lost that love and feel. <laughs> yeah. Thing. And it just in it, but there was this. It was great. It made you feel great. Emotionally correct is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the the the, uh, the different people that have covered it. Nina Simone. You don't know how many times I wish that I had told you. The the Letterman, Dizzy Gillespie. You know, wow. just an incredible one there. David Cassidy, of course, had a, oh, yeah. a, had a, a number one hit. AC hit with it years yeah. later and Glee, they mixed that one. I with love that yeah. one. Wasn't oh, that cool? Yeah. Oh god, that was a neat version. And Pretty in Pink used it, too, oh, yeah, John Hughes. Yeah. You could tell that that definitely inspired him, you know, because <laughs> um, they used it in that scene. But uh, the comeback also is used in, in that Lisa Kudrow oh, I'll be uh, right. TV I know, show yeah. a couple times as a theme. You'll have to go check that wow. out. Yeah, okay. it's, so, it's covered so much, we can't even follow it. You know, I, 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 hear, I hear something like that and I go, I, that, too? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Along Comes Mary because Tandon Almer wrote it and you were working on the demo and you're like, we need this song. Tell That's me that. That's ex exactly what happened. Uh, I was doing a little studio work, you know, at that, but sort of trying to be a studio guitarist. Actually, the record company that we went with uh, later was doing this demo, okay? And uh, Kurt Betcher was involved in it, who is our producer, ended up as our producer. So I went and played the song and I was completely blown away with it. I said, I want this for our band. And then along comes Mary. And at that time we weren't doing anything. Tandon wasn't doing anything. It was they said, okay, sure, yeah, take it, you know. And that's it. That's exactly yeah. started working on it the next day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just bam. Tell, just... tell me about how you guys arranged that and put that together, like the arrangement of the song and the the vocals and everything. Well, the like arrangement that. of that uh, that song was was kind of simple. All we had to do was follow follow the chords. <laughs> it, it was an unusual chord pattern, so it made it really easy for an arrangement. It's, oh, you know, it, nothing too tricky, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we put our little thing into it, you know. It got arranged like that. You know, there was very little... Uh, uh, just it came together. Yeah, it just came yeah. together. We were know. doing it live for quite a while before we recorded it. Yeah. yeah. And Kurt Betcher, who wound up becoming our producer, who was a friend of ours, he had a group called the... Uh, oh, what were they called? Oh, uh, the, anyway, they were from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Eau Claire, Wisconsin. The... Uh, something golden... Something. Golden rod or golden <laughs> wing yeah. or something like that. <laughs> anyway... 
He used to come out to the ice house where we started out and would sit there. So he knew all of our material and, you know, he had a pretty good idea of what was going on with it. So we recorded five things and Along Comes Mary was uh, one of them. Along comes Mary, does she wanna see the I went to the number seven. It was a big mm -hmm. hit, huge hit across uh, uh, America. It put you guys on the map. And the other thing is the controversy that started it. Tell me, <laughs> tell me if there's any, the urban legend, if there's any truth to that at all. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you really serious, man? You know, we say in our act, you know, people always ask us what this song is about. And if you got to ask, you ain't never going to know. <laughs> <laughs> But there you according, go. according to Tannen, it's social protest. Yeah. It's not saying, hey, let's all smoke marijuana. It's yeah. saying, hey, how about a, a level playing field? You know, mm. pills and alcohol are legal and marijuana is not, and it's less harmful. So that's right. kind of where he was coming from. Yeah. yeah. And if you, of course, I know you have, you listen, listen to the, the lyrics, it's, it's a portrait. It's not a, mm -hmm. oh, let's do it or let's don't do it. You know, yeah. it's just saying, hey, here you know, it is. Yeah. We, were, we were hired to do a grad night. A okay. grad night at uh, Disneyland uh -huh. and we were down there getting ready to go in and we were stopped by the security and yeah. the people and they weren't going to let us in they weren't so you you can't be playing that their drug zone there's uh, two stories either our manager or our road manager had a, a newspaper clipping that Mount St. Mary's senior class chose it as their song of the year because they thought it was about the Virgin Mary. And the, the other uh, story is, and I think they're both true, a bunch of nuns were entering the uh, the park and saw us and said, oh, the association, we just love your song about right the Virgin were, Mary. Right, when, <laughs> right, right as this confrontation as this was, was going there, on. You know, and the cop <laughs> okay. walked away, yeah. you know. There's the legend about the Ed Sullivan show, too, is that he didn't want you to play that, but you guys played it. We played it yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did, yeah. yeah. Here's one of the top rock groups of the world, the Association. The Stones had to change, let's, let's yeah, they, uh, spend yeah. the night together to didn't. let's <laughs> spend some time together. <laughs> You guys were up there at the doors and the stones of giving it to the man <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And he, it, of course, he was very been, nice, though. He oh, was yeah. Very, oh, yeah. Sweet yeah. Guy. I don't think he would have cared. It was probably his yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. As goes. He, was, he was pretty uh, cool. Yeah. It's been covered by the Bloodhound Gang. Yeah. <laughs> and along comes Mary. And along comes Mary. George Benson. Yeah, yeah I was, it's funny. I was looking at that today, the covers of, of the tunes. And guess who? I didn't know that. Well, I got to tell you guys, it's been an honor. Thank you so much for sitting down with us and telling us the story be stories behind some of the greatest songs of all time. Well, thanks. Well, that thank was a you. really fun interview, man. So the association followed up Cherish with another number one smash, uh, Wendy. Really one of the catchiest and happiest songs ever recorded. And then there's the number two classic, Never My Love, which would be probably more appropriate to walk down the aisle to. Never my love. Then they had another top 10 with everything that touches you. They had their last top 40 hit, Time for Living, in 1968. And uh, it seemed like after that, they turned into a pumpkin. They had a little comeback in the 80s with a Hot 100 hit called Dreamer. Dreamer. Didn't go too far, but it actually did do number 17 in the AC charts. And then co-founding member uh, Terry Kirkman, who also who wrote a lot of their stuff, he just passed away in 2023. Great band. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about the association, about their harmonies, about their songs. Do you remember this? What are your memories of it? These songs have been played in so many movies and it's always on, on classic stations, Oli stations. Uh, truly, they don't make them like they used to. These guys are amazing. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe. We always have interviews like this, a blast from the past to take you back to the good old days. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.